Cristiano Ronaldo not starting in this game, uh, which you know has happened before, but still unusual. Uh, he, people made a big deal, including you, of him going straight down the tunnel at the end of the match. Is there something to be read into this, or could he just have been cold? Well, I, I've written a piece about it today, so there's something to be written into it. So, um, look, I think the situation with Ronaldo is that if you take it on, on a game-by-game basis, it, it was non-eventful against Liverpool and Man City. He didn't contribute at all, so Chelsea away, same scenario, don't play him. But the thing is, it's more a case of what is this showing for the rest of the season with Randy coming in? Does this suggest that this is a sign of things to come, that Ronaldo will suddenly now become a, a bit part player, an impact sub? Because if they're going to play a pressing game, which, like Jules said, it wasn't that evident yesterday, if they're going to play a different way, then Ronaldo doesn't play a part of that. So for me, it's a case of what it showed that may be ahead. And, it, and if he is going to be a bit part player, there's going to be trouble ahead. And I don't think he's going to be happy with it because he, he didn't return to Man United to sit on the bench and become a guy that plays for 20 minutes every game. So the significance for me is that this is a sign of things to come and it doesn't bode well for Ronaldo. What I wanted to say as well is yesterday at the, at the, at the at Stamford Bridge when the team used and Mark and I were not far from each other in the press box, in the press lounge, when the team, team news arrived, the, the feeling and Mark, if you disagree with me, but from everyone there, it was like, this is not Michael Carrick's team on the, on the yeah. piece of paper that we all got. It felt very much like that Ralph Reinick was already saying, hey, this is how we should play. And then when we saw them trying to press, because they were only trying, they were completely disjointed and he would have to teach them how to press properly together. He felt even more like, a, and then when you saw Darren Fletcher with his little like earphones, Clearly talking to someone, we don't know who, and people are still saying to us, no, 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 Rangnick was not involved. I'm still very suspicious, by the way, because I think it looked very much like this was his calls made. Okay, well, that's just speculation. That's yeah, I don't care. I'm very happy to agenda. speculate. Ralph, I knew, I know it was you. I, I suppose it is reasonable to suspect that if you're Michael Carrick, you want what's best for Manchester United. If you think Rangnick's going to play in a certain way, you're going to try and play in that way. And maybe if you if you decide to drop Cristiano because he has played a lot of minutes. Um, and then this thing, with, by the way, dropping Cristiano, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Mark, I don't think he's been substituted many times this season. One of the things the last two years at Juve is they would give him days off and they would substitute him in games, which he didn't often didn't like. This but is Chelsea, guys. To get, this is Chelsea away. No, no. He, I, I'm, I'm, but I'm saying is once, for whatever reason, you decide to do that, then it does make sense to go out and try to press because the alternative is, which they didn't do particularly well, I agree yeah, with you. Yeah. The alternative is you're sitting back. I mean, three quarters of United starting defense were out. Let, let's let's also, you know, put this as a mitigating yeah, yeah, factor. Of course, of course. I thought United's performance was really bad. I was shocked. We were like, oh, look, they're pressing so well. Oh, look, McTominay. Yeah, McTominay's fine. Yeah, but for that job, when you're sitting in front of your back four and winning tackles, you can do that all day. Yeah. But um, I was – so – I, I can understand trying to play that way, and, and, and it makes sense, but they didn't do it well. But I am interested is if – where does Cristiano fit in a Rangnick team? Is Rangnick – and I, it's easy to go and to pick these people, especially people like Rangnick, people like Saki, people who are – you know, they almost have this religious fervor in the way they, mm-hmm. in the way they see the game, and, and this works for them. I mean, most people in Leipzig, if you speak to them, will say, yeah – Rangnick's a genius. Nagelsmann came, but he's more pragmatic. Yeah. He implemented the concepts and he made it work and we became a much better team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'd say that about Nagelsmann over Flick, too, by the way, at Bayern. Do you see, I mean, Mark, you were very negative about Cristiano's future at United, going so far as to speculate that maybe he'll get on the phone to George Mendes and say, find me another club in January. Well, I wouldn't be surprised that we've got we've got December ahead of us. And we've got four months, and if if Rangnick comes in and Ronaldo starts half of those games or even less, then he's not going to. He's thirty seven in February. He's not going to stick around on the bench at Man United, you know, for the back, like maybe you know the final two years of his, of his top level career. He's going to want to play. Now, you, Gab, you, you made the point that nobody can afford him, which is a, is a valid point. Well, but United can equally, obviously subsidize his wages for him to go somewhere else. I mean, obviously, that, that's the yeah, only way I think it could happen. Yeah. Maybe Paris Saint-Germain, since Neymar's out for a while. Of course. Well, he's, the best, he's the best paid player in the Premier League. He's not, he's not the best paid player to sit on the bench. Now, obviously, Rangnick's way of playing doesn't really accommodate a player like Ronaldo, but I think it'd be very foolish as well, Rangnick, to, to treat Ronaldo as 
as a sub because ultimately he's the top scorer of the team. He's got more than twice as many as the next highest scorer. So he has delivered. It's just that the team have, have had to, you know, work a different way to accommodate Ronaldo. It's, it's a difficult one because Ronaldo scores the goals, but equally, when he doesn't score the goals, he doesn't do anything. He did nothing when he came on yesterday. He had 20 minutes where he just ran around and went for a few headers and win them. So it's a problem that United have got. And I, I do think that if we get to, you know, five, six weeks down the line and Ronaldo isn't playing, he's not going to want to stay. He's not going to want to stay at Man United on the bench with Donny van der Beek and Phil Jones as he was yesterday. It's just not feasible. Now, the options, if you were to leave, are pretty thin. You know, you're looking at the Middle East or, you know, I don't know. I mean, it really is well, no, an option. Well, I, I, think, I think realistically, Mark, if he was going to leave, he's not going to the Middle East or going to MLS. He, if, he, if he were to go, what would happen is United would say, OK, Cristiano, we'll pay half your salary and you'll go somewhere else, ideally to a team that we're not going to be facing. I mean, that, that, that yeah, is the only scenario, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, let's let's yeah. be honest. 2022 could become a very, very big year for Cristiano Ronaldo because he's looking at the prospects of not being in the first team at Man United. He may not even go to the World Cup because of the nightmare scenario that Ports have got themselves in with the playoffs and potentially Italy. So, you know, what was going to be a crowning year of his career in the terms of, you know, finishing off at the World Cup, and whatever, it might suddenly become a, a, a year when he has to kind of sit down and think, what am I going to do? 37 right. in February, not playing at Man United. This really yeah, is a big, big I, I, I think you raised some very valid points, and maybe maybe I'm naive and I give United too much credit. But as I'm sitting here and I'm telling myself, okay, I'm United. I'm only appointing a manager for six months. Surely, one of the prerequisites in appointing the manager for six months is that I go to him, whether it's it's Ralph Rangnick or Lucien Favre or whomever, and I say, okay, we have Cristiano. Can you fit Cristiano into your plans? Will you? Because he's still our highest paid player. He's our best player. Yeah. He's our most productive player. I would, I would make it a demand of him. But I think and so I'm done. assuming they did that with Rangnick. But yeah, and I'm assuming Rangnick has a Cristiano plan. I, I'm sure. And, and again, if you play higher up on the pitch, maybe a bit more possession football. I'm not like saying that. Cristiano. But, but, you know, the higher you play on the pitch, the less running you will have to do, even if you press, right. even if you press and counter press high. The problem is if, we, if you play really deep and then you have to chase the opposition centre back or left back or right back if you're Cristiano at his age, you won't be able to do that for the whole 90 minutes. But even the game yesterday I was watching and I, I was looking at Bruno Fernandes, Cristiano could have done the same running than Bruno did on Sunday. He could do Every, the stabbing around as no, well. But he can run. Moved. We have to stop with this like, oh, he, he can never press. He can run. Yeah, if you, if you ask him 90 minutes of constant high intensity sprinting, maybe right. not, but he can run. Well, he can yeah, I, I, think, I think this is the thing, right? United have to become a possession team. If United are a possession 100%. team where they have 65% of possession, then they can also be a pressing team when they're out of possession because exactly. they're not going to be in possession that often. And the distances and are shorter. The distances are shorter. And you're not asking Cristiano to sprint 40 times a game. Exactly. You're asking him to sprint 10 times a game. I mean, I'm talking when he's not in possession. And those 10 sprints, I would venture, he can still do about as well as anybody. If they're two meters, is, if they're 20 I'm, meters, I'm, I'm they can't do. If they're two meters, of course he can. I'm assuming this is what Rangnick went I would think and so. said to them. And I'm assuming also, and again, I'm giving a lot of benefit of the doubt here. Me too. I'm very conscious of this. I'm assuming Rangnick says, when asked him, well, what do you envision? What, do you, what, what are you going to play? I wouldn't be surprised if it was some version of the diamond, perhaps with Cristiano as one of the front two, perhaps with Bruno sitting deeper, or maybe, I don't say not playing at all, but frankly, the, the, the problem with this version of the diamond, right, is that it forces you to play Matic, Fred, and McTominay. One of those guys breaks. I don't know who the next defensive midfielder United no, have. Then Pogba will come by from the back and play there. You can, I'm sure right, there's but, a way. But, but, but you're doing it then with more attacking players and that facilitates your possession game. And then yeah. you still have a, you still have have a, a fullback issue with width and quality, but, but that's another one. So I'm, we're, are we all comfortable giving this benefit of the doubt, Augie? I think what will happen now is that Man United will become a team that has a system and the players will have to fit the system rather than the last few years where they've had a, a, lot, a lot of players who just, you know, play wherever they can. Because Solskjaer didn't really have a system that, you know, he seemed to be wedded to. So if Ronaldo fits into the system or a system, then fine. But I just don't know how he does. Um, and well, we just told you. We just told you how he does. Players. Yeah, but I'm not sure. I, I think there's, there's more than Ronaldo's to deal with. I mean, you've got to find, you know, a decent right back for a start. You've got, he's got issues of his left back. He's, he's been caught in the past as being 
not a big fan of Luke Shaw. So I think he's not going to spend all his time worrying about Ronaldo because he has a lot of other issues right. to address. But um, the Ronaldo thing, I think just, just one thing, I think, let's say that we, we know that Pochettino is the, is the guy that United want. So would Ronaldo fit into a Pochettino team? I'm not sure he would. So if Randnick comes in and has been asked by the club, can you make a way to, can you make sure you fit Ronaldo in a little bit? You know, again, getting back to Man United being a, not a football team, but, you know, a, a, a thing that wants to appeal to the commercial sponsors. If Pochettino isn't a fan of Ronaldo, then maybe Ranić coming in and phasing him out is, a, is the thing that is the new cold needs. Ooh, it's like when Ferguson left. And tried to move on way, it's like when Ferguson left and he basically leaving present for David Moyes and Wayne Rooney leaving the club. But David Moyes, for some reason, decided that Rooney should stay and gave him a new contract. And then, you know, right. Fergie's leaving present. Was, uh, maybe the, the big picture is that to make life easy for Pochettino if he comes in, because it, we've seen what's happened at Parish with all the big stars. He's not massively uh, a fan of, of working with them. Maybe the best picture is new manager comes in next to them, Ronaldo goes, and then United are a football team again and a football club again. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.